This post will combine the books Lean Startup by Eric Ries as well as Lean Impact by Ann Mi Chang into one single short summary. And we're going to start with the question, what is a startup? And one is engaged in a startup if they're trying to do something which is new, such as a new product, a new service, a new market. And this means that, that a startup could be found within an existing organization or a new company or a for-profit business or an academic institute or a nonprofit. Really, a startup could be a small project or a whole new venture. You don't need to be working in a for-profit technology company in Silicon Valley to technically be part of a startup or to benefit from startup thinking, according to Eric Ries. And so a startup, by definition, is trying to do something in an area where there's a high level of uncertainty. If the path forward was clear, a startup isn't needed. Instead, all that is required is a straightforward business plan. And so a social impact startup is often formed when the path is very unclear because the solution, if it was known, would have been previously implemented by markets or the government, and this challenge should have been solved by now. Enmi Chang, who wrote Lean Impact, challenges social impact organizations to set their vision of what they want to do with this frame of mind, that if their plan is successful, they want to be able to reach a sizable number of people affected by an issue. And so this is the type of exponential thinking, which is a necessary part of the traditional Silicon Valley startup, but is rarely found in the social impact startup. We now move into understanding what the purpose of a startup is. Well, the purpose of a startup is to reduce the uncertainty about what works and to find the winning combination of value, growth, and impact. And a startup's purpose, therefore, is to develop validated learning, which is about how an organization can test first their value hypothesis. Can they build something that people really want? Can they test their growth hypothesis? Do they have a way to scale what they're doing? And now in a traditional for-profit startup, you're looking for essentially product market fit. And so your surrogate marker that you found the successful combination would be profit, would be um, money. But if you're working in a social impact startup, you don't often have profit as a viable uh, indicator of success. And so therefore, Enmi Chang adds that the social impact startup needs to test the third hypothesis, which is the impact hypothesis. And this states that for every dollar that they're spending as an organization, they're able to spend it as cost-effective as possible. And for each unit of impact they have as an organization, they have the greatest potential impact possible. And so this means tracking metrics and continuous improvement. Now, in many ways, people who are familiar with the scientific method of hypothesis will be familiar with this idea of hypothesis-driven development. And that's really what we're applying here, but into the business context. To quote Peter Singer, innovation is the path and impact is the destination. Let's now move into summarizing Enmi Cheng's book, Lean Impact. It has three sections, think big, start small, relentlessly seek impact. So section one, think big. Here, she encouraged us, us to start with a long-term goal and to consider a plan that has the potential to reach a significant number of people affected by the issue. Quite often, to achieve full potential, one organization can't do it all. And so ultimately, a strategy of partnerships, collaboration, and new policies and markets is needed to achieve full impact. And so you need to face your goals based on real-world needs and not what seems incrementally achievable as people traditionally think. You move into part two now of the book, start small. And in here, what one does is they identify all the assumptions about a proposed plan and why the approach will fail if any of these assumptions are invalid. And so for each assumption, what one wants to do is develop a series of hypotheses that need to be tested. And so these hypotheses must validate that the premise the assumption is either true or not. And in order to test that hypothesis, what one does is create an experiment. Now, the goal is to create an experiment that requires as few resources as possible to test the hypothesis. Any work invested in the experiment that adds functionality and features beyond the hypothesis that needs testing is, if you use lean manufacturing lingo, considered waste. 
And the reason this is called waste is because the purpose of the startup is to develop validated learning. You're trying to gain insights about value, growth, and impact. And your goal as an organization is to move through this build, measure, learn feedback loop as quickly as possible in order to have the highest chance of success in coming across what the magic combination is. And so any work that deviates from this purpose of trying to do experiments, build, measure, learn as quickly as possible is really called waste. And so the hard work in a startup isn't the innovation. It's not coming up with the inspiration or the idea, but the hard work is the perspiration to test the idea and then to eventually turn it into meaningful social impact. Now, often groups will want to bypass the stage of starting small. They say, well, we must have a higher impact sooner because the need is so great. But the problem is that when you scale much larger, it's much harder to innovate and to experiment and test. And so part two, start small. Let's move now into part three, relentlessly seek impact. And here, the social impact organization must measure and test each hypothesis with experiments. And so organizations must fall in love with their problem and not their solution. The goal is that you want to be able to report to donors and funders that your unit yield and your unit cost, meaning the impact you have, and the cost it takes you to have that unit of impact continually improve over time. And you want to be able to demonstrate how these metrics are being tested with new hypotheses and the, which ones are most superior and successful. Let's move now into funding. So Enmi Chang hopes that the future of philanthropic funding is used to de-risk ideas with huge potential. Now, initially, social impact funding should therefore enable organizations to rapidly experiment and learn if the hypothesis is correct or not. And so the purpose of this funding is really to figure out what has the best value, growth, and impact hypothesis. Those ideas which show promise then should receive additional funding. This is a tiered model of funding so that they can further scale their hypothesis and test them at a larger level. And then ultimately, the highest level of funding should only be reserved for those ideas which have clearly risen to the top and demonstrated the ability to have massive impact and are scalable. Now, ultimately, when you go to scaling a project at a very highest level, what Anne Me suggests is you probably are going to need a, some sort of a blended finance model. And what this means is that the initial philanthropic dollars are used to fund the really risky innovation. And then you understand what works best. And what this does is it unlocks further innovation from private capital and markets or governments who can then come in and scale that innovation at the right uh, speed and scope. And so this lean impact approach to social goods helps ensure that funds which are used on projects are those which have the most potential for impact and the most proven value, growth, and impact hypothesis. It ensures that organizations always continue to strive to do better and to always believe that they can achieve greater impact with fewer resources. And this is really a hypothesis-driven results-based mentality of work.